Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Lord him, all you peoples. For his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. My name's Arthur, and I thank you for joining me as we share together this shortest of Psalms, Psalm 117. Just two verses. But that's all that we need to say. Praise the Lord. The whole theme of Scripture is that God involves himself in our lives. He wants a relationship with us. He wants to be known by us. He wants us to understand him. And when we do come to understand him, there is so much that we will praise him for. We know that the book of Psalms is the hymn book for the Jewish people. Many of the Psalms written by David. Some, like this one, are not ascribed to a particular individual. Possibly it was used in the temple as a response by the people when other things were going on. But notice what it says. Although it is from the Jewish hymn book, it says, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Lord him, all you peoples. For his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endures forever. To praise the Lord is to speak of his virtues, to speak of his character, to speak of his goodness. The things that are mentioned in this particular psalm are his merciful kindness towards us and his truth. Other places it mentions his grace, the fact that he forgives us, the fact that he is good towards us, the fact that he is patient with us. These are characteristics of God and if we are his people, we need to understand and recognise those characteristics. Lord him, all you peoples. The problem is that we're very happy to promote people to say so-and-so is a great person, but we're not so happy to acknowledge God is the greatest of people. When the Lord Jesus came, He showed us the character of God. Paul explains he was the express image of his person. The character of Jesus is the character of God. If you have seen me, Jesus would say, you have seen the Father. So when we look at Jesus, what do we see? We don't see someone who is prancing around in fancy clothes, in limousines with gold and silver hanging around his neck, These are earthly trappings which men of the world use to try and impress other men of the world. But these are not the attributes of the Lord that we acknowledge. Yes, he is the light of the world. In him there is no darkness. He doesn't just reflect light as diamonds, as polished silver, as polished gold. He is the light. He is the source of all light. But people love darkness rather than light, and so they hide from him. So we're thinking about what is it that we can declare about God, that we can tell the people that others might praise him as well. Well, there are two great themes that are picked up. In in heaven, when John was given a glimpse of heaven in Revelation chapters 4 and 5, The first theme was to worship God because of creation. For the stars declare his handiwork. They show his might and power. They show his wisdom. Whenever we take time to enjoy the environment in which we live, the sunset, the sunrise, the stars, if we look down a microscope and understand the incredible complexity of life, And it all works together. Yes, our world is now sinful. And so the balance is not always perfectly maintained. And there are earthquakes and there are outbreaks of disease as something gets out of balance and out of whack. But this whole system is absolutely mind-blowing when you take time to think about it. So many aspects, the amount of salt in the sea, the amount of oxygen and nitrogen in the air, the amount of carbon dioxide in the air, 
All of these things operate within narrow tolerances that the Lord has set, that life might persist on the earth. The cycle of water, how we can get fresh water from the heavens, the cycle of the wind, so many marvellous things in creation. But that's just one aspect of why we would praise the Lord. The second is expressed in the words, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain, and have redeemed us to God by your blood, out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. The world is condemned to destruction, but God wants to rescue us from this world to redeem us, and so Christ has paid the price for our sin with his own blood. And this is why we can praise the Lord. He wants a relationship with us. This psalm is emphasising his merciful kindness and his truth. So not only has God created this world and set it going, uh, some have likened it to a, a complex clock. God wound it up and walked away, they think. No, the thing that is unique about the God of Israel, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, is that he wants a relationship with people. He made us that he might bring many sons to glory. Because of his character of love, created a people that he could love. And he does love. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The love that God has is more than tongue can tell, the song goes. Here it's expressed his merciful kindness is great towards us. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is his creation, but great is his relationship with us. To think that the Lord Jesus would come and walk around Galilee and Judah, up and down those hills, coming to Samaria just to meet a wicked woman who was entrenched in her wickedness. There was no way that she could escape. She'd had five husbands. Now she was living with a man that she hadn't bothered even to marry. But she was one that the Lord reached out to, the one that the Lord offered to her the living water that she might never thirst again. And she accepted the invitation. This was God's mercy, his kindness to this woman who we would look at and just say she's made her bed, let her lie in it. Let her have the consequences of her lifestyle. And we would think that we were better than her. There was a man who came and prayed before God, I thank you, Lord, that I'm not like other men. But the point is, he was exactly like other men, boasting of himself before God. No, there is nothing that we can boast of before God. Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, all you peoples, Lord him. Whoever we are, God wants a relationship with us and we can begin that relationship by acknowledging him, acknowledging his mercy towards us, learning the truth, for the truth of the Lord endures forever. He is full of goodness and truth and that truth comes to us first of all in the word of God. As Jesus said, thy word is truth. Keep them in the truth. Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth of God is not just a doctrine, but when we accept the word of God as truth, we come to a greater understanding of all that is in the world. That truth begins with the creation. It ends with the fact that every man shall stand before the Lord Jesus Christ to be judged for the things that we have done. And those who have not accepted his forgiveness will experience his wrath. For he loves us and he offers to every one of us, Jew and Gentile alike, the forgiveness of sin, a relationship with God, through faith in Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord, all you peoples. Praise the Lord.